I made a ranking video for killer perks. Now it's time to rank survivor perks best and worst by categories. Let's start with the most used category of perks, as 99% of survivor builds use at least one exhaustion perk. And the best one is Death Heart. Death Heart is still the best exhaustion perk in the game, but now bad players cannot abuse it. Death Heart allows you to tank a hit from the killer, and even with the rework, this perk is now high risk, high reward, and it's even better than it was before for those tryhard sweaty survivors. This perk controls the way Dead by Daylight is played because killers will wait for the Death Heart even if you don't have it. It lives rent free on the mind of every killer. The only counter to it is Deep Wound. So for example against Dead Singer this perk is practically useless, but against killers with telegraphed attacks like Huntress, Nurse or Blight, Dead Heart is still the best value exhaustion perk in Dead by Daylight and the perk that will give you the most amount of time if you get the timing right. For the worst I chose Smash Hit. Exhaustion perks are strong when you can depend on them and they have easy accessibility to use. Smash Hit is by far the worst exhaustion perk as it's only activated on a pallet sun, meaning it's the only exhaustion perk in the game that is limited if we do not count adrenaline which I think fits best on another category. This doesn't count the fact that your teammates can waste pallets and you can miss a stun, which renders this perk useless. The only way this perk could become useful is if it increased the duration of a pallet stun for killers as well. Now let's talk about information perks, the most useful perks for solo survivors, and the best one is Kindred. Since I equipped it in my loadouts, I cannot play without it. Kindred is such a useful perk for solo survivors and even for friend groups too. It gives the location of all survivors and the killer that is close to the hook survivor and it also gives this same information when you are on the hook instead. So no matter what, this perk is helpful as long as the killer hooks someone, you get value. Knowing the direction of where the killer will go is enough to counter perks like barbecue and chili or to plan ahead the direction from which you are going to go for the save. It also tells you if you should go for the save to the hook survivor or if another teammate is planning for it. It's such a useful perk and it's so good that I simply cannot back to play without it and I highly recommend any survivor that is riding solo to try this perk at least once. And if you are a beginner, guess what? This perk is free for everyone. So I would go as far as to say this is the best solo and beginner survivor perk in the entire game and the entire video as well. And okay, I will shut up about Kindred now, it's time to talk about Buckle Up. How did we go from one of the best perks in the game to one of the worst? Buckle Up is the most useless information perk in the game and in my opinion the worst perk in this video by far. There is not a single build where I think this perk is good, it's just a waste of space in the hard drive. This perk gives you information on how high the recovery status is of a slug survivor. So already we are off to a bad start, because if the killer never slugs in a match, this perk is already useless. But if that was not enough, for some reason they decided to add a range requirement to this perk. This is by far the most useless addition on any perk in the game. And not only that, but the second effect is that it gives you aura reading of the killer's location after healing someone. What is the point of that aura reading? Even at best, this perk is not good enough to warrant a perk slot. Because if you want an anti-slug perk, just use Unbreakable or we are gonna live forever. I have no idea why this perk hasn't been reworked yet, because I would bet that only two types of people use this perk. The ones that are doing Ash Williams Adept and the nerd emojis who are going to comment on this video just to say that it's not that bad of a perk. Since I am still too pissed at buckle up, let's change the subject to support perks and let's talk about something that is useful, like reassurance. The newest perk featured on this video, reassurance is such an amazing perk in my opinion and I think it's game changing even, absolutely countering camping as a strategy. Reassurance gives 30 seconds extra of hook time to survivors that are currently hooked and this tax 
if it's used by more than one survivor. It's true that unlike most of the perks featured in this video, sometimes you might not get any value out of it, but that's already a huge bonus because if the killer is not camping or tunneling, the match is going to be easier by default. But when the survivor is almost dead on hook or the killer is proxy camping, this perk is the best support perk someone could have. I think out of all the perks a survivor can use in order to support their team, reassurance is one of the best picks. As for the worst, I chose corrective action. This is one of those perks that I don't understand why they added it to the game. On paper, it sounds kinda cool. You prevent your teammates from missing a skill check, so you don't have to worry about any mech heads exploding your gen and leaving it. But there are a lot of problems with this perk. The big problem I have on this perk is that its only purpose is to prevent missed skill checks from other survivors. So it looks nice for beginners, but it's tied to a character that no new player is going to buy until they spend a lot of time in the game, which by that point, they won't be missing a lot of skill checks. So there are way better support perks to run, like Reassurance, Borrow Time, and even better than new. Let's talk now about stealth perks, those perks that will help you deceive the killer and escape chases. And the best one is Distortion. It was hard for me to pick between Distortion and Lucky Break, which is another perk I think is absolutely busted and not a lot of people are using it, but I decided to go with Distortion because I think this is one of the most underrated perks in this game as I don't see it enough as a killer main. And to be fair, I am glad. This perk absolutely counters so many of our reading perks from the killers like Lethal Pursuer, Darkness Revealed, Flutes of Rage, and a lot of killer add-ons that when combined with Lethal Pursuer are devastating to play against. Not only is this an amazing counter to so many killer perks, if you are experienced enough, you can actually learn what the perks and add-ons the killer is using is, which is huge information in a DVD match because if you are playing with a teammate, you can tell them what perks the killers are running, like telling them that the killer has lethal pursuer or barbecue and chili so they can prepare for it. If you haven't used distortion yet, try it sometime. Low profile is the worst one in my opinion. There are a lot of bad stealth perks in this game, but since I can only choose one, I decided to go with low profile and it's very possible that you saw a coconut video featuring this perk. But that video proves my point even more. Low profile could have had a lot of potential, but by the time this perk activates, it's basically game over. And the worst part is that it's not infinite, but it has a time limit of 90 seconds at max per each use. There are way better perks to use in these situations, so why use a perk that revolves around your team losing heart for you to get a benefit? And since we're talking about benefits, Let's talk about perks that provide a buff to survivors. The best buff perk in the game is Prove Thyself. Prove Thyself is the most meta perk in this video by far. So if you just want to win, use this perk with a group of friends and that's it. This is the best and most consistent perk in order to repair generators faster. As the closest thing is Hyper Focus, which is another really strong perk to gen rush, but it requires skill unlike Prove Thyself, which only requires another survivor working on the same generator as you do. It increases repair efficiency and also gives you some blood points faster. It's an amazing perk and I am honestly impressed that it did not get a nerf yet. The worst buff is Up the Ante. There are a lot of bad buff perks in Dead by Daylight, but the one I believe is most of the times useless is Up the Ante. It gives luck to all survivors in the trial for each survivor alive. It would have been useful if luck did anything at all in this game, because it only helps with self-unhooking chances and that's it. You thought you would get better items with luck? Well you are wrong, that's not what luck in Dead by Daylight does. So its only purpose is to increase self-unhook chances. If you were one to use this perk, you have to run Slippery Meat as well as a luck offering or else it's a wasted perk slot. There are only three types of people that still use this perk. The ones that are doing Adept Ace, the ones that are still new to the game and think that luck improves item rarity in chests, and the ones 
that have a group of friends that all use Optiante with slippery meat and combo it with luck offerings, basically guaranteeing that each of them will escape from the hook, but that's such a niche specific situation that it doesn't warrant this perk from even upping the rank a little bit. Utility survivor perks are some of the most interesting and unique perks in the game, and the best one is built to last. This utility perk allows you to repair your item when you enter inside a locker. Basically, if you have a busted toolbox fully kitted with add-ons, you can get it back. Super powerful flashlight, you can fully recover it two times in a match. That very strong medkit that already healed you and your teammates over six times, back again. Items in Dead by Daylight are very, very strong and useful, and a perk that repairs your busted items is something very useful and not enough people are abusing it. However, I do have to give a shout out to any means necessary, because that's another utility perk that I think is fun to use and it's really cool. The worst utility perk for me is Red Herring. This is one of the three trickery type of utility perks where you try to bamboozle the killer with fake information, but out of the three, Red Herring is by far the worst as you have to repair a generator enough and then if you enter a locker, that generator will give the killer a fake notification. The problem of this perk is that it will lead a killer to a generator and you don't want that. You want killers to be as far as possible from other gens. This perk is the best at pranking other survivors in a toxic way. Deception is way better because it might trick the killer while in a chase and diversion can give you some value if you do it right without having to lead any killers to working generators. Now let's talk about perks that will defend you and increase your chances at surviving. Unlike support perks, these provide a benefit to the user and the best one is off the record. Another meta perk for this video, off the record is a perk that punishes killers that tunnel survivors, especially if you get to escape the killer after getting unhooked, you get healed by another survivor, and now for the rest of the time that off the record is active, you can tank two hits while not doing any injured noises and having your aura completely hidden from aura reading killer perks. It's no wonder this perk is one of the most used perks in Dead by Daylight. The worst one is Reactive Healing. This is one of the perks that sound kinda good but once you read the fine print, you learn how bad this perk is. Reactive Healing will recover 50% of your missing health progress. So in other words, this perk becomes exponentially worse the more progress you have, but it will never recover your health entirely. So unless you have a medkit, self-care or another teammate, you cannot rely on this perk alone in order to recover your health state. Some people say that the best defense is a good offense. So let's talk about aggressive perks and the best one is Blast Mine. It's sad that this perk got nerfed, but even then, I still think out of all the offensive perks in Dead by Daylight, this is the only one that can have both meanings of the word offensive in it. Blast Mine makes the killer lose a lot of time, as it not only gives them an embarrassing 5 second cooldown while blinding them at the same time, but they also have to kick the generators again since that's what they were interrupted of doing first. It's one of the most fun perks to use and definitely the best aggressive perk that you can run on the game, especially with the generator meta with the eruption, colorblind and overcharge. Let them have a taste of their own medicine. The worst one is Residual Manifest. So it's true that the main use of this perk is to get a flashlight from a chest so it fits the utility perk category, but honestly, if you are going to use this, you will bring it yourself, along with your overpowered add-ons and built to last is better in that case. The secondary effect of Residual Manifest is giving the killers the blindness status effect, which is very interesting in my opinion, but it's not very powerful as you need to blind them. So for that purpose, distortion is just better. In fact, any killer perk that deals with items completely counters this perk and you have to blind the killer, so that means most likely you are in a chase, which means unless the killer has a aura reading build, this perk ends up being useless. Now on the other hand, some people say that the best offense is a good defense and altruism perks 
help keeping you and your teammates alive, with the best one being We Are Gonna Live Forever. This perk counters killers looking very hard and it also protects the survivor that was picked up from the ground if you have a stack. The speed at which you heal down survivors is very fast and it can render snowball killers like Myers, Plague or Oni to be very ineffective, as well as any other killer that tries to slug in order to win. It's an amazing perk after its rework and the only problem I see with it is that it does not help you personally but it does promote altruistic plays so I still count it as a perk in this category. The worst one is Autodidact. Don't listen to the Autodidact cultists that are trying to make this perk to be some hidden gem. It's trash. It's entirely dependent on RNG. It does not synergize with medkits. It does not work with hyperfocus. It's entirely dependent on your luck while you are healing another survivor. And it also gives negative progress bonus at the start of the healing when you have no stacks. I am not going to lie and say that this is not a fun perk to use because when it works, it's an absolute blast but by itself and with no plan, this is the worst altruistic perk in the game. So I previously mentioned we are gonna live forever, but what if the one getting slugged is you? Then in that case, the best perk to use is Unbreakable. Ever since its introduction to the game, it has been a meta perk. So that must mean something, am I wrong? Unbreakable can single-handedly turn the tides of a losing match and completely nullify a killer's 4k slug tactic. Just like Deadheart, it leaves rent free in the minds of killers because you are never sure a survivor has it until you see one picking themselves up from the floor after you made that amazing snowball play. It also increases the speed at which you recover, so it combos nicely with We Are Gonna Live Forever and it allows you to 99 the recovery progress so other survivors can one tap you from the ground. It's an amazing perk and one of the best perks in the game. However, if you have tenacity on the other hand, then I am sorry to say, but most likely you will not survive. It's an interesting perk concept, don't get me wrong, but its only purpose is to use it in combination with flip flop and power struggle. The main use of tenacity is to escape from the killer while you are crawling on the ground and basically hide from the killer since it got a buff that reduces your groaning noises. So if the killer does decide to slug you, then yeah, most likely you will disappear from the radar as Deer Stalker is not common anymore. But know what, time to wait for the timer to finish you so you can get to the next match. Boon Totems. Ask any killer main their opinion of boons and enjoy the free salt. But that's normal, considering that the best boon is Circle of Healing. This is just an absurd perk and one of the strongest perks in Dead by Daylight by far. Circle of Healing creates a safe space for any survivors in the map to heal themselves or increase the speed of which they heal each other and all of that for absolutely free. Depending on the maps, this boon can be an absolute nightmare to play against and it completely kills the hit and run tactics and killers that benefit from it and the best part is that since it's a boon totem, just one survivor can have it and it provides benefits to the rest of the team. Even after all nerfs, Circle of Healing is still one of the strongest support, altruism and survival perks in Dead by Daylight. That's a lot. However, out of the rest of boons in Dead by Daylight, Dark Theory is the worst. It provides a minuscule speed boost of 2%. And I have no idea why they decided to give this effect to the boon. Haste is a very serious thing to balance in Dead by Daylight because if it's too much, it's a problem. But when it's just a little like in this boon, then it's almost meaningless. To this day, I haven't seen any videos of Dark Theory value and considering all the benefits the rest of boons give, it is clear that this is the smallest benefit out of them all. And honestly, I think it should have a rework and have another special effect instead something more scary and fitting of Yoichi. Of course, this video wouldn't be complete if we didn't talk about the meme category, one of the most divisive, controversial, impressive, dramatic, special, useless, overpowered, insert adjective perks in the entire game. And the best perk in this category is no meter. Only absolute giga chats are allowed to use this perk. With this single perk, 
you counter every single insta down killer like Hillbilly, Leatherface, Myers, Ghostface, and every single exposed perk. The killer has no it. Doesn't matter, you have no meter. The totem glows, but it's haunted grounds. Well, if it glows, it goes. It completely counters the plague's power. It also synergizes very well with This Is Not Happening, Resilience, and Dead Heart, the most overpowered perks in Dead by Daylight. But sadly, this category couldn't be perfect. And the worst perk is no meter. This is an absolutely useless perk, especially if you start the match and blood orbs start to spawn around you. The benefits it provides do not outweigh the cons, which is that you are one hit constantly and it doesn't even mute your groaning sounds. No killer is going to leave a no meter survivor slug, so the unbreakable built in on this perk is pointless either way. This is just a bad perk and only meme survivors are going to use it. And to finish this video, let's talk about endgame perks and the best one is Adrenaline. This perk is an amazing crutch perk to have in any loadout and it can completely turn the tides of a match with amazing plays that you can put in your weekly streaming compilation. Adrenaline also works if you are hooked so it gives you a speed boost of 5 seconds while also healing you straight from the hook. Adrenaline helped me so much through my time playing as a survivor and it was a staple of my loadouts for a long time and it's still to this day one of the best perks in Dead by Daylight. For the worst, I chose Left Behind and I thought Soul Survivor was bad, but at least it got a buff. Left Behind's only purpose is to find the hatch's aura, so the only reason someone would use this perk effectively is to equip a key and not die until the end game. because if you don't have a key, you run the risk of the killer closing the hatch, rendering this perk absolutely useless even if you do end up finding the hatch. I have no idea why you would run a perk that's only purpose is to situationally and in very specific cases help you when you are losing. If you can run better perks that help your team stay alive and win, like prove thyself, reassurance, we're gonna live forever and the list goes on. Anyways, thank you for watching and have a nice day.